Hi. Welcome to this talk on the computational biology program, which is, of course, necessitated by the coronavirus outbreak here in Singapore and worldwide. And I'm going to make a connection to that because it is really the case that this field, computational biology, is, uh, is central to how people are understanding the coronavirus outbreak and how people will predict, how people are predicting where this outbreak is going to go and, and the uncertainty in the future um, over the coming months. So what is comp bio? Computational biology is, is a, a hybrid or an intersection between two seemingly disparate fields. The field of biology, which we often think of as being empirical, uh, qualitative. We often see biology texts as pictures or drawings in a textbook. And we think of computer science as being something entirely different, something derived from logic and abstractions uh, involving mathematics and, and a, a digital world. But in fact, today and going forward, uh, computational biology is the direction that biology is headed, and it's the place where biology already is. In the next few years, genomic data is going to be the largest single source of data in the entire world. It'll be larger than astronomical data. It'll be larger than all the video data on YouTube and Twitter, any other source. So what's happening is that in the field, uh, what we're doing is applying computational techniques, algorithms, uh, new ideas of modeling and simulation into the field of biology. And since 2004, NUS has offered an undergraduate degree in this exciting and new field. What's the program? Uh, the program is part of the Faculty of Science. It's a multidisciplinary program. It's a four-year program, so this an honors, it's a direct admission honors program. Uh, and in the first two years, students study, uh, as you'll see, quite a lot of, of computer science and mathematics and statistics, as well as a core component of life sciences. And they start to branch into specializations beginning in the third year. Uh, it's multidisciplinary. It involves many departments. It involves departments in the Faculty of Science. It involves departments in the School of Medicine. It involves uh, the School of Computing on the other end of campus. And we have affiliated faculty members from the School of Engineering and from the Center for Computational Biology at the Duke NUS Medical School. From when the students in the Faculty of Science, when they read those modules, what they start is they start to develop a well-rounded uh, appreciation and, and understanding of the life sciences, but in a way that's different from their life science major uh, classmates, uh, they also study much more mathematics and much more statistics. Uh, the laboratory of computational biology is the computer. So if you think of somebody in the, in, in, uh, uh, the life sciences working in a laboratory, maybe with a pipette, or working out in the field with some collection devices, our laboratory is sitting at the computer uh, and, and doing experiments or simulations or data analysis at the computer. So the students in our program don't have to take wet laboratory uh, modules. In the School of Computing, they learn how to program. They learn not just how to program in practice, but also about algorithms and data structures and various advanced topics. They learn a lot of analytic skills from both the School of Computing and the Faculty of Science by taking modules in statistics that overlap quite heavily with the majors in the data sciences. And how do they uh, manage all of this? Well, unlike, say, students majoring in computer science, they are not required to develop the same level of software engineering skills that might be required of somebody who's full-time in the School of Computing. These two trade-offs of the wet laboratory and the software engineering allow students to read computational biology as an undergraduate major. So what's the curriculum look like? Well, for the first couple of years, students study biology and chemistry, and most of their classes in these are with, other, uh, are with students who are majoring in the life sciences. Along with computer science students, they study programming methodology, data structures, algorithms, and so on. In year two, 
They go further in biology, molecular genetics, cell biology, bioinformatics, and introductory computational biology. And in mathematics, they study calculus, linear algebra, discrete structures, probability, mathematical statistics. Which, how they organize these modules, of course, depends on the individual students. Starting in year three, students may study more specialized technique areas of, of interest. So they may study protein structure and function, mathematical methods, uh, underlying genomics, genomic data analysis, which is a very practical module, and they might start to specialize in either a more computer science-like direction, that is databases, mach uh, uh, machine learning, neural networks, artificial intelligence, uh, life sciences, so they might specialize in biophysics or genomics, neurobiology, we've had students specialize in all of these, or the data sciences and applied statistics. In year four, Students take on a full year research project, or they can now take on a one semester full-time internship. They also take some modules. They take an advanced topics in bioinformatics, which draws from the literature, functional genomics, which is a life sciences module, an advanced life sciences module. And they can take continued specialization modules, such as the, some of the things listed here, depending on their specialization interests. Uh, the final year research projects vary a lot. These are just some examples. So here's a, this first project is a theoretical uh, project uh, that deals with epigenetics. Um, some of these are very applied projects. Here, this is a great project from a student who's moved on to a PhD in how the original multicellular organisms came about. Uh, and then this is a fun project here at the end about putting genes on Twitter, 20,000 gene accounts on Twitter and allowing genes to tweet and interact with humans. The projects vary widely and they're chosen by a student and a professor who supervises the project. So that's a little bit about the program. How do you get into this program? The first thing is you have to get into the Faculty of Science. So students who apply to the Faculty of Science and get in and accept that admission are then eligible to apply to computational biology. The application is on the Faculty of Science website and there's more information at the end of this uh, presentation about it. It's a simple application and it's a niche program so we have an opportunity to review every student for what, they, what their needs are for the program. Students should have good A-level uh, H2 passes or, or equivalent in mathematics, or further mathematics, and either biology or chemistry. If they have not done H2 uh, in either biology or, or chemistry, then they should have some O-level or equivalent pass in it, in which case it's possible to take a bridging module. So those are the basic admissions of the program. Students are considered on an individual basis and we often have interviews. So students, this program has a reputation for being hard. That's reasonable. Nobody comes to NUS expecting a cakewalk. So uh, you should be interested in something. And I wanna be clear about the challenges of the program. It can be difficult because part of the difficulty is just balancing the uh, education of uh, computer science uh, type classes and life sciences classes. Some of the classes are hard and they're hard in different ways. Module schedules may be difficult to arrange, uh, especially for students who are uh, going between different faculties. And in the first two years, sometimes students go very deep into computer science and they don't see, or it's hard to see, how that relates to their life sciences education. Uh, this is because the program initially tracks really closely with computer science and life science major requirements, and so the classes tend to be filled with students of those majors. Nonetheless, the program is extremely rewarding, and the students who've come out of this have uh, gotten great things out of the program. Uh, it's really unique. It's powerful. It allows students to go deeper in these areas than they would otherwise be able to do. If you studied computer science alone, you wouldn't really have the opportunity to understand and appreciate the problems that really occur in the life sciences. If you study life sciences alone, you generally don't get the rigorous training to put the mathematics and computer science to use. If you consider what other options there are, you could do a double major in computer science and life sciences with honors. This is a very difficult road. 
Uh, in my view, working in the dry lab, that is working on a computer, is more uh, uh, is is in some respects more is preferable to working in the wet lab. Uh, certainly, if you uh, drink coffee, you can drink coffee in the lab in a way that you can't do in the wet lab. The class is small, the cohort is fairly small, and you'll have an opportunity to know all of your classmates and get support from your seniors. And finally, we're here to help, not just the faculty and the administrators, but your seniors and a network of students interested in computational biology. What we're looking for is students to graduate from this program with a really good interdisciplinary education and they will be prepared to succeed in this new biology area. We expect them and we found that students are sought after for job opportunities in postgraduate programs and they have a really wide range of career choices. Sometimes they are so in demand that they get hired outside of computational biology just because of that interdisciplinary background and rigor. There's some really obvious career prospects for this major. So students may major in the, may uh, go on directly into, say, the pharmaceutical industry, biomedical industry, biotechnology, health sciences, or go into graduate studies in one of these disciplines. That's pretty obvious. Maybe less obvious is to be hired in as a data scientist in some industry that's not directly related to the more obvious choices. And Maybe less obvious still are careers in entirely different fields where the people who hire into those fields value the learning agility, the ability to work in cross-disciplinary environments that this major develops. So we've had students who've gone on to wildly differing careers. So we've had students who've uh, gone on to do computer science PhDs or life sciences PhDs. We've had students hired as data scientists first sometimes in the pharmaceutical industry and then elsewhere. We've had students hired, graduates hired as statisticians. We've had a graduate who was initially hired as, uh, uh, to look at, at biotech industry and eventually became an investment manager. Um, and the data sciences are not just, in, the people who are hired in data sciences in this uh, major are not just hired in the life sciences but sometimes in areas that diverge off such as insurance. Our graduates do quite well, and they're generally in demand for both postgraduate studies and for career opportunities. With that, I want to just leave it. This is a uh, QR code that you can use from your phone, um, and it will take you to more information on the computational biology program. You can also get more information simply by emailing uh, this uh, email, and this will go to our program administrators uh, and myself and we can uh, address any questions that you might have. Thanks for listening and putting yourself through this video. Hope to see you in class in the fall of 2020.